Christmas University Challenge. Asking the questions, Jeremy Paxman. Hello, time to open another window on our intellectual advent calendar and gawp at a couple of teams of grown-ups doing battle for the honour of their former institution. We're playing seven matches in this first round, but out of seven winning teams, only the four with the highest scores will go through to the next stage. Now, Birmingham City University is represented by a professional landscape architect who also writes and broadcasts on her chosen field. If anyone doubts her competitive nature, they should know she's already fought her way to six gold medals at the Chelsea Flower Show. With her, an award-winning actor. As well as her work on radio and television, she's provided voices for numerous audiobooks, as well as for all the female characters in Postman Pat. And since 1986, she's played the most insufferable character in the entire canon of Western fiction. <laughs> Their captain is another familiar radio voice, having presented pretty much every programme on Radio 3. He's presented the BBC Proms, hosted concerts from the Royal Albert Hall, Wigmill Hall and the Barbican Centre, and he writes and presents arts documentaries. Their fourth member has been described by John Updike as a writer of hallucinatory skill. He won the Guardian Fiction Prize and the Whitbread First Novel Award for Continent, the E.M. Forster Award for Signals of Distress and the James Tate Black Memorial Prize for Harvest. Let's meet the Birmingham City team. Hi, I'm Bunny Guinness. I gained a postgraduate diploma in landscape architecture in 1981. I've written a column in The Telegraph for many years and I now run a landscape design practice with my daughter, Unity. I'm also a regular panel member for Radio 4's Gardener's Question Time, since which I've been doing since the end of the last century. Hello, I'm Carol Boyd. I went to Sheffield ostensibly to study English but decided it was much too difficult and sidetracked to the Birmingham School of Speech and Drama. After a circuitous journey through the, the theatre, etc., I found myself in Ambridge playing um, Linda Snell. And for anyone who's interested, I am currently auditioning for next year's pantomime. <laughs> <laughs> and their captain? Hello, I'm Ian Skelly. I graduated from Birmingham in 1986 with a degree in journalism and communication studies. Uh, I went on to be a reporter for the BBC and a presenter in news and then eventually joined Radio 3. And now I present Essential Classics every morning from 9 until 12 on Radio 3. Hello, I'm Jim Crace. Um, I graduated in 1967 uh, with a degree in English literature. After that, I was a journalist for about 20... 12 years, then I became a novelist. I'm now retired and uh, writing novels as a pastime. Well, now, playing for Wadham College, Oxford, is a journalist who writes for the New York Review of Books, in addition to the UK paper with which he's most associated. Once a reporter for The Washington Post, he presents Radio 4's contemporary history series, the Long View, and he writes fiction under the pseudonym Sam Bourne. His latest is called To Kill the Truth. With him, a specialist in infections of the brain, he's director of the National Institute's Health Protection Research Unit on Emerging and Zoonotic Infections, where his concerns include Ebola and Zika. He's also known as the Running Mad Professor, in which guise he raises awareness of encephalitis and wins Guinness World Records at the same time. He's also a science communicator, appearing frequently on radio and television. Their captain is now with The Economist, but began her career on The Times, covering East Germany, the Balkans and Russia, before becoming deputy editor of The Spectator. She's held a senior position at the London Evening Standard, for which she still writes a political column. She's also a regular panellist on Radio 4's The Moral Maze. Their fourth player has gone back to university after a career at the BBC, where his roles included editor of Radio 4's Today programme. The London Olympics happened under his watch on BBC Sport. He was controller of Radio 5 Live, head of BBC TV News, and sometimes he used to fiddle around on Newsnight, he claims. <laughs> Let's meet the team from Wadham College, Oxford. Hello, I'm Jonathan Friedland. I studied philosophy, politics and economics in the late 1980s, and I am a columnist for The Guardian. 
Hello, I'm Tom Solomon. I graduated with a medical degree in 1990, and I'm now a professor of neurology at the University of Liverpool and the Walton Neuro Centre in Liverpool. This is their captain. I'm Anne McElvoy, and I studied German and philosophy at Wadham in the mid-1980s. A few years on, I'm senior editor at The Economist, and I run Economist Radio, which is our podcasting. Hello, I'm Roger Mosey. I graduated from Wadham in 1979, having read Modern History and Modern Languages, and I'm now Master of Selwyn College, Cambridge. Right, the rules are the same as ever. Ten points for starter questions, 15 for bonuses. Fingers on the buzzers, here's your first starter for ten. I felt an obligation to get him away from a racial stereotype and instead make him a crazy old Father Christmas gone wrong. Those words of the actor Ron Moody summarise his portrayal of which of Dickens' ah. characters? Wadham Friedland. Fagin. Fagin is correct, yes. <laughs> so you get the first set of bonuses. They're on an 18th century novel, Wadham. Marking its 300th anniversary in 2019, which novel did Coleridge praise for its description of the universal man? E.M. Forster, on the other hand, dismissed it as a Boy Scout manual. Robinson Crusoe. Correct. When my spirits are bad, Robinson Crusoe. When I want advice, Robinson Crusoe. When I've had a drop too much, Robinson Crusoe. Those are the words of Gabriel Betteridge, one of several narrators in which 19th century novel? We don't know. It's the Moonstone. And finally, if Defoe had really lived on a desert island, he couldn't have written Robinson Crusoe, nor would he have wanted to. Who wrote that in a 1940s piece discussing intellectual freedom? George Orwell. George Orwell is correct. <laughs> Ten points at stake for this. Meanings of what seven-letter word include as a noun, a liquid in which other substances dissolve, and as an adjective, having assets in excess of liabilities? What a mercy. Solvent. Solvent is correct, yes. <laughs> you get a set of bonuses on stockings. In Austin's Sense and Sensibility, which character becomes seriously ill after walking in wet grass at twilight and, quote, by the still greater imprudence of sitting in her wet shoes and stockings? Eleanor. No, it's Marianne Dashwood. Secondly, in Seller and Yeatman's 1066 and all that, to which Plantagenet king do the authors attribute the phrase Oni swaki mali pons, which they translate as honey or silk stockings hanging down. <laughs> Richard the Third. No, it's Edward the Third. Oh. And finally, in the song by Cole Porter, which two words follow the lines? In olden days, a glimpse of stocking was looked on as something shocking. Now, heaven knows... Anything, Anything goes. goes. Anything goes. Can you see it? <laughs> right, ten points for this. According to folklore, what suite was created in 1670 at the behest of the choir master of Cologne Cathedral to pacify children in the choir during long services? It was shaped like a shepherd's crook to make it more acceptable to the congregation. Birmingham City Cranks. Licorice. No. I'm afraid that was just an interruption, so you're going to have to lose five points. What a mercy. Candy cane. Candy Kane is correct, yes. <laughs> 15 points of these bonuses. They're on British wildflowers. White admiral caterpillars feed exclusively on Lonicera periclimenum, a woody climber known by what common name? Its scent is strongest at night, enabling it to attract pollinating moths. Honeysuckle. Honeysuckle. Correct. Primula veris is the scientific name of what wild flower? Reputed to have a sedative quality, it is sometimes called St Peter's Keys. Chamomile. No, it's cowslip. Also known as ramson's buckram's or bear leek, 
and often carpeting the ground in areas of woodland, Allium ursinum has what common name? Bluebells. No, it's wild garlic. Right, we're going to take a picture around now. If you're a picture starter, you'll see a photograph of a historically significant building taken in 1969. For ten points, I want the building's name. Wadham Friedland. The Stonewall Club. I'll accept that. It's the Stonewall Inn, I think it was called. That was a photo showing protesters in the aftermath of the 1969 police raid on New York's Stonewall Inn, which are widely regarded as the catalyst for the modern gay rights movement. For your picture bonuses, I want you to identify the locations of three of the world's biggest gay pride parades 50 years on. Firstly... Rio de Janeiro. No, that's Sao Paulo. It's the uh, annual gay pride march there, which regularly attracts over three million people. Secondly, this city, its parade is one of the largest in Asia. Taipei. It is Taipei, yes. And finally... Cologne. That is Cologne. About a million people would be up for that one. Right, ten points for this. What event inspired the early 19th century poem that ends, Ye are many, they are few? Present-day protesters marked the bicentenary of the event on a rainy day in August 2019. Birmingham City Craze. Peterloo Massacre. Correct. Right, you get a set of bonuses this time on Channel 4's alternative Christmas message. Firstly, who in 1993 gave the first Channel 4 Christmas message? Born on Christmas Day 1908, he was an author and raconteur who styled himself one of the stately homos of England. Quentin Crisp. Correct. Appearing in an animated series that had been acquired by Channel 4, which character read the message in 2004, comparing her marriage to that of the Beckhams? Hmm? I'm guessing Madge, the yellow lady. <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> I, no, I think that's not specific it's enough. Not. It's Marge Simpson. Marge Simpson. Yes, no, I'm sorry. You, you, you were thinking along the right lines, yes, but I you didn't remember. get there. And finally, having revealed the existence of the NSA's information-gathering programmes in 2013, which US National Security Agency contractor read the message that year? We don't know. That was Edward Snowden. Ten points for this. August 2019 saw the 60th anniversary of the release of which celebrated jazz album recorded by a sextet that included the bassist Paul Chambers and the saxophonist John Coltrane and Cannonball Adderley? Birmingham City Craze. Uh, kind of Blue. Kind of Blue is correct, yes. <laughs> you get a set of bonuses on a shared acronym. Firstly, for five points... ICE, I-C-E, is information visible on the lock screen of a mobile phone that enables first responders to contact next of kin. For what do the letters I-C-E stand in this context? In case of emergency. In case of emergency. Correct. An ICE table is used for tracking the stages of a chemical reaction. In this context, for what do the letters I-C-E stand? No. No, we don't know. It's initial change and equilibrium. And finally, in the UK, the ICE is an independent association of which professionals? Thomas Telford became its first president in 1820. Institute of Civil Engineers. Institute of Civil Engineers. Correct, yes, Institution of Civil Engineers, yes. Right, ten points for this. 
prominent in the summer of 2019, which cricketer's profile begins an unexpected star and continues thrust to prominence by Somerset's decision to gamble on turning wickets at Taunton, he bowled in spectacles, giving him the air of a slight... Adam Friedland. Jack Leach. Jack Leach is correct, yes. <laughs> you get three questions on revolutions in 1989 for your bonuses, Wadham. In which country did the self-governing trade union movement Solidarity comprehensively win elections in June 1989, effectively ending communist rule? Poland. Correct. By what term is the bloodless overthrow of communism in Czechoslovakia more commonly known? It resulted in Václav Havel being elected president. The Velvet Revolution. Correct. Which dictator was overthrown in December 1989 in Romania, the only country which saw a violent uprising? Nicolae Ceausescu. Correct. <laughs> right, we're going to take a music round now. For your music starter, you'll hear a piece of popular music. For ten points, please identify the band or... Birmingham City Skelly. Led Zeppelin? Nope. Anyone like to buzz from Wadham? You may not confer. One of you may buzz. What a mercy. Deep Purple. No, that was the Jimi Hendrix experience, but uh, we'll take the music bonuses in a moment or two. Ten points at stake for this. Pot, kettle and black can all be followed by what word to make respectively two terms for geological features created by erosion and... Birmingham City Guinness. Hole. Hole is correct, yes. <laughs> OK, a moment or two ago, we were listening to Jimi Hendrix. His performance closed the Woodstock Festival, which marked its 50th anniversary in 2019. For your bonuses, you're going to hear three more pieces from bands or artists who performed at Woodstock. Five points for each you can identify. Firstly... Ravi Shankar. Correct. Secondly... Sweeping cobwebs from the edges of my mind Had to get away to see what we could find Simon and Garfunkel. No, that was Crosby, Stills and Nash. Oh. And finally, I want the name of this band's lead singer who performed at the festival. Okay. Tina Turner. No, that was Janis Joplin. <laughs> <laughs> right, ten points for this. Sorry, I pressed my <laughs> Ten points for this. Richard Arkwright and John Kay developed the water frame textile spinning machine in which city on the River Ribble? In 1889, its football team... Birmingham City craze. Derby. No, you lose five points. In 1889, its football team won the inaugural English Football League Championship. Adam Solomon. Is it Blackburn? No, it's Preston. Ten points for this. The daughter of the sun god Helios and a nymph. Which figure in Greek mythology is the title character of a novel by Madeline Miller? She changed the companions of Odysseus into swine. Adam Friedland. Circe. Circe is correct, yes. <laughs> These bonuses are on a writer, Wadham. Singing and swinging and getting merry like Christmas is the third of seven autobiographical works published between 1969 and 2013 by which writer? Sorry. That's Maya Angelou. In the 1950s, Angelou took part in a prolonged international tour as a performer in which folk opera set in Catfish Road, Charleston? Porgy and Bess. Correct. Angelou's 1995 poem, A Brave and Startling Truth, commemorates the 50th anniversary of which organisation? I'm 
Nations. Oh, yeah. The United Nations. Correct. Ten points for this. <laughs> Doctor, Daddy, Gardener, Servant, Porter and Victim are among the screen roles of which British actor between 1954 and 1990, each role appearing in the film's title? Birmingham City Craze. Dirk Bogard. Correct. <laughs> Your bonuses are on the 2019 Tour de France. In July 2019, Egan Bernal became the first person of what nationality to win the Tour de France? Colombia. Correct. Which teammate of Bernal came second in the 2019 Tour, having won the race in 2018? Delgado. <laughs> Delgado? No, it's Geraint Thomas. And finally, for a record seventh time, the Slovakian Peter Sagan won which jersey awarded to the best sprinter? Green jersey. The green jersey. The green jersey is correct, yes. <laughs> right, we're going to take another picture out. For your picture starter, you'll see a painting. For ten points, please name the artist. Birmingham City Boyd. Van Dyke. No. Anyone like to buy some water? Order McElvoy. Hals, Van Hals. No, it's Velasquez. So we're going to go on then and take the picture bonuses in a moment or two, but in the meantime, here's a starter question. Including dresses designed for Princess Margaret and Margot Fontaine, the VNA's 2019 exhibition, Designer of Dreams, charted the history and legacy of which French couturier who died in 1957? Birmingham City Craze. Coco Chanel. No, anyone like to buzz from Wadham? Wadham Mosey. Dior? It was Christian Dior, yes. <laughs> that means that you get the picture bonuses. You, you'll recall we saw a portrait by Velasquez, one of the first paintings on display at the Museo del Prado on its opening in 1819. Your picture bonuses, three more works from the collection of the Spanish royal family on which the museum was founded. Name the artist in each case. Firstly... No. That's by Titian, the Emperor Charles V. And secondly... Botticelli. No, that's by Poussin. Right. And finally, who's this by? Renoir? No, that's by Goya. Right, ten points for this. What is the common name of the native British reptile Anguis fragilis? Though it has no legs and resembles a snake, it is classified... Birmingham City Crace. Slow worm. Slow worm is correct. Well done. <laughs> Your bonuses, Birmingham City, are on chemical elements named after geographical places. In each case, identify the place from the description. Firstly, a capital city in Western Europe, after which the element lutetium is named. Yeah, you thought? We're guessing Stockholm. No, it's Paris. Oh. What is the English name of the island country from which the transuranic element nihonium derives its name? No, we don't know. That's Japan. And finally... From which Mediterranean island does the element copper derive its name? Cyprus. Cyprus is correct. <laughs> Ten points for this, three minutes to go. What island gives its name to the area of outstanding natural beauty that includes South Stack Lighthouse, Carmel Head and Hollyhead Mountain? It's the largest A-O-N-B in Wales. Uh, what a mercy. Anglesey. Anglesey is correct, or English more. <laughs> right, these bonuses are on animated films with titles that include the word Christmas. In each case, name the film from the description. Firstly, a 1993 film written by Tim Burton. Its voice cast includes Danny Elfman and Catherine O'Hara. The Night Before Christmas. 
No, it's the nightmare before Christmas. Secondly, a 2011 film with voice cast including James McAvoy, Imelda Staunton and Bill Nye. The, the Grinch that stole Christmas? Um, uh, sorry. Yeah, the Grinch that stole Christmas. No, it's Arthur Christmas. And finally, a 2009 film directed by Robert Zemeckis, Gary Oldman and Bob Hoskins are among the voice cast. Come on. The Grinch. the Grinch is still Christmas again. <laughs> no, it's a Christmas carol. Ten points for this. Which British architects' commissions have included the Reichstag building in Berlin? The what HS... a mercy! Norman Foster. Norman Foster is correct. You're going to say the bonuses now on <laughs> imperial units that are still widely used in the UK. In each case, give the unit from the description. Firstly, the imperial unit that is the weight of approximately 60 raisins. <laughs> An ounce. Correct. Secondly, a unit equal to the area of 66 cricket pitches, using the dimensions laid down in section 6 of the MCC laws. An acre? It is an acre, yes. And finally, the imperial unit that corresponds to 96 imperial teaspoons. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. A pint. It is a pint, yes. <laughs> Ten points for this. Often grown indoors during the Christmas season, the best known. <laughs> well, bad luck, Bunny. I'm sure you were going to buzz in correctly, but you're too late, I'm afraid. <laughs> The answer, of course, is Poinsettia, which doubtless is what you were going to say. But uh, we shall have to say goodbye to you, Birmingham. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. So you didn't have to do it. It was jolly sporting that you did. <laughs> Wadham, we shall see whether 160 is enough to make the cut as one of the four highest scoring winning teams. But thank you for joining us too. I hope you can join us next time for another first round match. But until then, it's goodbye from Birmingham City University. Goodbye. goodbye. It's goodbye from Wadham College, Oxford. Goodbye. 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 And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>